Good morning, everyone. We're here for this week's edition of Rye Chai, Courage, Hope, Attitude, and Inspiration, sponsored by Wilson, Kehoe, and Winningham. I'm Dawn Newman, uh, the research director here at RHI, and I'm also an associate professor at IU School of Medicine in the Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation Department. And I am so excited to be here today speaking with Maria Martino and having an opportunity to get to introduce Maria to you. Are you in class this time? No, absolutely. Um, Maria is a good friend of mine. Um, we've known each other for quite a while. Um, Maria came to I've gotten to know Maria through RHI, um, through some of the work that we've been doing and the research that we've been doing in particular with brain injury. Um, so just to give you a little bit of backstory, to get to introduce you to Maria so that you guys can know Maria a little bit like I do, um, tell a little bit of history. So like I said, Maria had a brain injury. Um, it was quite a few years ago. And I was thinking we could start off with Maria telling when that when did that actually happen did you get your brain injury and how did that happen it was on um, my birthday and uh my well on my birthday in 2005. and how and actually how did the accident happen <clears throat> um my niece is going straight on a green light and a lady disregarded her light and turned right in front of us and hit my side. So pretty bad car accident. <laughs> Very bad. On your birthday, no less. I know. What? A, not the best birthday gift. <laughs> no, it was not. A, it was going to be a good one, and then <laughs> no. So I know at the time of your injury, um, at that time you had had your masters and you were going for your doctorate in something. Yes. Um, I was going for my doctoral on, in the health behavior family studies, um, and I was just home for the weekend for my birthday. Mm. And so, you know, that, you know, obviously it was a very important thing for you, you know, getting your doctorate and stuff. And then along comes this car accident and this injury that changes things. Were you able to finish the program at that point? Um, no, I wasn't able to finish the program, the studies, or being an associate instructor because um, I had complications from my brain injury and other injuries I suffered in the car accident. So I wanted to talk a little bit to talk about kind of this journey that you've had um, in terms of um, some of the changes that happened after, after the injury. And I know one of those changes had to do with your speech. So can you tell a little bit more about what happened with that? Um, Yes, my speech is no longer smooth and fluid like it was before. Um, and it's also very tangential. Um, I also have aphasia, which now adds to the anxiety. So kind of that aphasia where you're having a hard time <laughs> finding words and stuff. Well, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you, I'm trying. You are doing a fabulous job and really appreciate you being here. And I know that, you know, it adds kind of to the extra of you being here <laughs> and doing an interview. And so it just, it's all that extra special to have you here. Um, well, thank you. I appreciate being here. Getting outside of your comfort zone. Right. <laughs> it's okay. Every once in a while, we all have to do something outside of our comfort zone. It's worth zone. it. <laughs> Aww. Um, and I do know one of the other changes, too, um, after your injury had to do with some changes in emotions. Yes. What about your emotions changed <clears throat> after your injury? Um, my emotions changed quite a bit because um, I was usually, I was mostly a, a positive person now. Um, things changed mostly negative. Um, and then I became more anxious, irritable, frustrated, depressed, and angry. And now um, I have a lower frustration tolerance than before. So these are kind of common changes that a lot of people after a brain injury deal with. Um, but they obviously, these are the ones that really can impact your life. And so um, did you actually find that some of these changes in your speech and your emotions, do you feel like your, your relationships changed after your brain injury? Um, 
Yes, quite a bit. Um, I had lost some friends and people I used to work with um, because I was not the happy-go-lucky person who spoke so smoothly and fluently anymore. It was mostly choppy and so, yeah. It's a little bit harder to kind of keep those relationships. Um, again, also not an uncommon thing. So I know like, so we've been talking about kind of some of those challenges that you've encountered. And I think that's, that's pretty much what brings us to how you and I actually got to know each other. Um, because of these changes in your emotions, um, you had decided to participate in one of my research studies actually on emotions. And um, probably one of my favorite memories ever is after you finished participating in that research study of mine, you, Maria had given me this card that to this day is probably one of my favorite things ever. And I would just like to give this card to Maria for a second to read what it says on the outside and the inside. It says, thankful, appreciative, grateful. And it says, um, dear Dr. Don, that's what I call him. Um, that's me, thanks to you. Thank you for helping me feel more optimistic again. Sincerely, Maria Martino. Beautiful. So this, <laughs> <laughs> tears of joy. <laughs> well, let me tell you, when I, so when I got this card, I had tears of joy. This is, um, it's really hard to, for me to ironically put into words how this made me feel, but I also was thankful, appreciative, <laughs> and grateful. Um, it was super meaningful, and I think it was extremely clever and poignant because the study itself was actually about helping people um, learn how to identify their emotions, how to figure out what it is that they're feeling, how to label them, describe them, how to communicate their emotions. And those were things that you were struggling with after your brain injury before you participated in this study. And so this was your way of telling me the progress that you made from the study. And so I was just extremely touched to have gotten that card, to have been able to make such a huge difference in somebody's life. So um, this was kind of the, one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. Um, so with that said, I did want to just ask you, so why is it that you decided to participate in the study? And what were you hoping to get out of it? Um, I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Um, I got my life back. Uh, a part of it anyway. I was giving hope by being listened to um, and it helped me to get my words out and positive emotions back. I am better able to verbally express myself. I had emotions that were now consciously available again and I was also able to articulate my emotions and words again. Before I had words in my head but they could not um, be accessed. It was as if my brain and mouth were stuck on pause and now my brain and mouth are working better again. So those are some really meaningful changes. Really some amazing changes, right? And so you would participate in this study just hoping that you can be heard, that somebody can listen to you. I know after your injury, you went through you know, quite a few people not understanding who you were and not understanding the changes that you experienced. And so this was one of the programs I remember you telling me about that you finally felt like somebody, you know, understood some of the stuff that you were going through. And so, you know, it's interesting because I think sometimes we um, kind of overlook how important our words are to us and how important our emotions are. Um, and so this is one of those, you know, being able to participate in this study really helped with that. Um, so do you think that, um, that your friends and family noticed any changes in you? Um, yes. Um, for me, it was a freeing and amazing moment. And for uh, my mom, um, noticed I was not angry, depressed, frustrated, or had a general feeling of malaise. 
Um, I'm. You're good. You're perfect. <laughs> um, yes, they noticed how I was not irritable as before the study. I also um, was able to talk about the positive emotions that I was experiencing. So they noticed, my friends noticed I could would talk more and my mom noticed I wasn't so irritable and bad mood. <laughs> That's a big deal. That's a pretty big deal. Um, you know, for other people to kind of notice that as well. So it wasn't just an impact on you, but it was an impact on your family and friends as well. And I remember you telling me one of the stories how um, you used to get upset really pretty easily, right? Uh. So anything can kind of set you <laughs> off. And I remember after the study, you told me this story, how you and your mom were traveling to oh. Beef and Boards. Do you remember telling yes, me that story? I do. And um, your mom, basically when you had gotten there, it was closed. Yes, I mixed <laughs> up the date. The and, day. and, you know, you told me, you said prior to the study, you would have went off. You would have oh lost gosh. it. But instead, you said, well, at least we got to spend the day together. I know. That was like vastly different from night and day and your mom was like who are you yeah <laughs> she's like <clears throat> what happened and we talked about the study and she agreed that you guys are life savers literally i know i had to put that in here oh that's so sweet um but <clears throat> anyway so big change there oh yeah she was like yeah who are you and she would just like smile and i'm like i'm still upset <clears throat> And trying to use my feeling words instead of saying, it's a bad idea, use a feeling word, see. And so, so, um, yeah, I was just like, who are you? So I think one of the things you had told me before is that prior to the study, you would be focusing on all those negative emotions and that was all that you can see. But after the study, you learned a bigger array of emotional options and that there can be multiple emotions at the same time. And so you started to explore some of those positive feelings too, yeah. which really came out and it still comes out. I mean, and it's like more of the old bees coming out and like, yay. And this was a couple of years ago that you participated in this yeah. study, right? <laughs> yeah, and so even two, maybe even three years ago, I'm not even sure anymore, but you were just telling me earlier today that you still find that you still are, you know, have noticed a big change at this, yeah. you know, that the, the changes are still there. Yeah. And I still use the papers mm -hmm. to write out things out. So, yeah, we had a, a, a paper, a piece of paper with an emotional compass on it that would talk about emotions and it would have basically um, allow you to sort of navigate how you're feeling. And this was one of uh, Maria's favorite things from the oh study. God. And apparently positive, she still uses this Positive compass. energy, negative energy. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so it sounds like that was a really important tool for you to have. Um, so I guess, with, so with that being said, I do want to bring this back to Rai Chai and what that stands for. Courage, hope, attitude, inspiration. How would you say that this study, participating in this study, has helped with your courage, hope, attitude, and inspiration? Um, part, I'm sorry. Participating, I need to read this. Participating in the research study at RHI gave me courage to talk more about my emotions, alexithymia, and my TMI. I was given hope, and now I'm hoping to continue working. Um, speaking and expressing my emotions. I also understand the emotions of others I meet. I have a better attitude now. I understand what I'm feeling and able to express my emotions better. People who helped me in the research study inspired me because they believed that I could get better. Um, with understanding my emotions and being able to read the emotions of others. And um, I think I told you. Um, it's also verbally has also went in it, went into written expression. So I did this and before, um, well, after the wreck, I couldn't have done this, but this is like another part of me. That's my old me. I'm like, yay, I wrote, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, so just to, to fill in, to fill in the audience. So we came it's up so with exciting. some questions yeah. for the interview ahead of time. 
And so you were telling me earlier that, you know, basically being able to write down your thoughts right. was very difficult <laughs> after the accident. And so this being able to kind of write down those things in response to those questions, this is something that has also changed oh, for yeah. you since the injury. I so, and I just, and what a, an amazing job and how inspirational that you are to me and I would imagine to all of the folks out there watching. Um, so one of the things that I love about working at RHI is the support that we get for research. Um, RHI is um, very pro-research and obviously I'm a little bit biased, but um, research is kind of what <laughs> helps to change the quality of services that RHI is able to provide to its patients, to people like you and many of the other patients at RHI. And through, basically, RHI is able to support that research through donations, through generous donors. So as a recipient of our research, what would you say to potential donors out there about why it's so important to donate to research and to the foundation? Mm -hmm. I think it's very important for donors to support research here at RHI because this is a nonprofit hospital. Um, your generous donations help fund research for brain injuries and spinal cord dam damage. And I think, you know, all of the stuff that you said earlier, the, you know, the courage, the hope, the attitude, the inspiration that you have, the story that you shared, I think that together, I mean, that really summarizes and kind of illustrates, I think, the importance and the, ch the changes that could be made in somebody's life through research um, donations and support. So I really, you know, appreciate you coming here today. I know that you are a busy lady. You have a, a lot going on. You've actually, I know just in the last couple of years that I've gotten to know you, some of the cool things um, you've gotten involved in. Um, one of the other things too, just really briefly. So RHI is a traumatic brain injury model systems hospital. We are one of 16 in the nation. Um, basically what that means is it's a longitudinal study where we can help understand and study the chronic effects of brain injury and how we can better treat people, um, improve the quality of life for people with brain injury. And um, through this research and what we learn, um, we create these fact sheets and through the TBI Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center. So. Um, Maria is actually one of our reviewers of these fact sheets, which is really awesome. And then after she became involved with that, they <laughs> loved her so much that they asked her to become an ambassador. <coughs> so for the TBI Model Systems Knowledge Translation Committee. So that's really fabulous. And then I know just to help uh, us understand the important needs of people with brain injury and giving us that touchstone and help provide us that guidance, um, Maria also serves on our TBI advisory committee. So all um, invaluable services that we really appreciate your contributions to. So with that, um, I do know that we are getting close to the end of time. So I just wanna thank you so much Maria today for coming and just for just being such a, an amazing advocate. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Absolutely.